This is called a soil moisture sensor. It is based upon a physical property called time domain transmissiometry. And what happens is the electronics within this, this waterproof compartment send an electromagnetic pulse out these stainless steel, high grade stainless steel tubes. It then measures the amount of time that it takes that pulse to get from one side back to the other. The difference between that time is a measure of the amount of moisture that is in the soil. As if you remember from your high school physics classes, they, you, the teacher would put a pencil into a glass of water and the, the pencil would be bent or appear to be bent, but you pull the pencil back out and in fact it's not bent. That principle is exactly why this soil moisture sensor works. As light passes through water, it literally slows down. The same thing happens with this electromechanical or electromagnetic pulse as it passes through from one side of these tubes to the other side. In the presence of moisture, it literally, that electromagnetic pulse will slow down. The electronics within this waterproof casing measures the amount of time that it takes for that electromagnetic pulse to get back from after having been transmitted. The difference between those times is then put into a computer algorithm or a, a computer formula and that determines the amount, the percentage of water that is in the soil. Important thing about this sensor is it is not dependent upon the type of soil that there is. It is not dependent upon any characteristic of that soil except the amount of moisture that is in the soil. It is only keyed on the moisture as opposed to the mineral composition of that soil. So it can be used in Seattle, Washington, it can be used in Miami, Florida, in Providence, Rhode Island, Manchester, England, or Beijing. It doesn't matter. The moisture in the soil is what the key is. It measures three things. It measures the moisture that is in the soil, it measures the temperature of the soil, and it measures the electrical conductivity, or the EC of the soil. And those three components are then put together to determine what the critical levels of field capacity of the soil, which is the maximum level that, of water that can be held by that soil without having gravity pull that moisture out, as well as a calculation of what the allowable depletion level is, sometimes called MAD, or the maximum allowable depletion of that. So that is dependent strictly upon the field capacity. You don't want to put more moisture on your soil or on your landscape than the field capacity because that water will be pulled out by gravity or evaporated by the sun. It will take nutrients with it. It will leach out the nutrients from the soil. It will waste your water. You'll pay for water that you are not using. It will waste your nutrients from the soil. It will also occupy voids within the soil that would otherwise be occupied by oxygen and deprive the root zone of the necessary oxygen for plant nutrients. This is buried in the root zone of the, the turf so that, or the plant bed, wherever the plant beds that you put it in, so that you will determine the available moisture percentage of the, the field capacity that is available to those plants and to the roots of those plants at all times. The information that comes from the sensor that is buried in the soil is transferred back by these wires to the, the actual controller, which is in fact a timer, uh, a lot like the, the timers that you have, would perhaps have on your wall right now. It has timer capabilities and can be used as a timer if that's what you wanted to do with it. Or it can be used in a mix or match situation. You can have all of your irrigation stations or sometimes called zones controlled by the sensor, reading off of this sensor. Or you can have some of them on time. You can
can have all of them on time or some. You can mix and match however your plant material needs are. It communicates this information back to the controller. The controller measures that. This is, the moisture is evaluated on a real-time basis. On this controller, you can interrogate the sensor at any time to see exactly what the moisture content of the soil is. You also can see what the temperature of the soil is and what the electrical conductivity of the soil is. There are parts of the country where water is very, very expensive and, and we've seen our systems pay themselves uh, off in as little as four months. The typical payback period for most water rates is from one year to two years. You also are not having to to pay for new plant material because the plants are nourished uh, properly. You're also not spending as much money for wasting fertilizer that you, that you would fertilizer that's going into the river or your water bodies of water that are around, which you hear about all the time. And the cost of a system is approximately three to four hundred dollars installed. So the payback period is the savings in water is from six months to approximately two years in, in most cases.